Wow. And we will be out on time or early for those of you who are going on the tour of the new proposed facility. So we want to make sure you have time. The buses will arrive. They will leave on time. And if you're late, you can run. <laughs> All right, go home. With that in mind, Ms. Garcia, would you take the roll? Eva Henry. Steve Odoricio. Jeff Baker. Here. Elise Jones. Here. David Beacom. Here. Randy Wheelock. Sean Wood. Chrissy Panganello. Anthony Graves. Robin Kniech. Kevin Flynn. Roger Partridge. Dave Weaver. Gail Watson. Libby Zabo. Casey Ty. Bob Pfeiffer. John Marriott. Bob Roth. Here. Larry Vidham. David Spellman. Aaron Brockett. Here. And Justin. Lynn Baca. Rex Bell. Tara Radloff. Jeff Blue, George Teal, Jason Bauer, Doris Trular, Carrie Penaloza, Laura Christman, Earl Holan, Richard Champion, Gail Christie, Rick Teeter, Here. Okay. Debbie Nasta, Catherine Whitman, Steve Conklin, Here. Joe Jefferson, <phone rings> Steve Yates, Jeff Deacon, Mark Gruber, Daniel Baird, Present. Lisa Jones, Laura Brown, Lynette Kelsey, Henry Ergot, Scott Norquist, Storm Glore, Sarsha Karras Graves, Here. Ron Rakowski, Present. Mike Hellman, Brad Weasley, Stephanie Walton. My phone. Brad Weasley, is that you? Yes, on the phone. Thank you. Shakti. Here. Jerry Bean, Isaac Levy, Bill Sernanek. Present. Jacob Lofgren, Larry Strzok, Wynn Shaw. John Peck, Gabe Santos, Ashley Stolz. Here. Connie Sullivan, Dan Greenberg, Colleen Whitlow. Here. Deborah Jerome, Sean Foray, Chris Larson, Kyle Mullica, Jordan Sowers, John Dyack. Here. Sally Daigle. Yep. Thank you. Rita Dozal, Mark Laces, Heidi Williams, Eric Montoya. Herb Atchison, Here. Joyce J, Adam Zarin, Deborah Perkins Smith, Bill Van Meter. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, I'm sorry to interrupt. Joe Jefferson also is present uh, from Inglewood on the phone. Thanks, Joe. <laughs> thank you. And Commissioner Zabo also joins us. Uh, just one quick piece. Mr. Peck, if you didn't get my name. All right. Thank you. Welcome. October 4th, uh, I am going to ask you to make sure you mark that on your calendar. That will be a very lengthy meeting. The agenda will be, it will, yeah, it will be very important that you are here. Uh, it will be extended meeting with one agenda item only that night, and that will be the interview of the three finalists for the executive director position. And each person will be here doing a presentation that night of their capabilities and what they think should happen. Each presentation is scheduled for 45 minutes with 15 minutes for us to talk about how bad they did or how good they did behind them. So please, we do need as many of the voting members of the board to be here on that night because we are going to make a recommendation to the full board on October 18th on who to negotiate with. So please do everything you can. If you cannot be here, please make sure your alternate is. We will get one shot at this. Next item up, uh, we've done roll call. Thank you for that. The summary of the June 7, 2017 work session is in your packet. If there are no changes or corrections, I would entertain a motion to accept. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, minutes are approved. The chair requests that there be no, uh, be no public comment on issues for which a prior public hearing has been held before the Board of Directors. At this time, I will open up the floor. If there's anyone who has public comment, please come up to the microphone. Each person coming has up to three minutes. Libby. Seeing nobody coming to the board, we'll move on. First item on the agenda is item number five. This will be attachment B. Mr. Rex, if you would, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and, and good evening, everybody. Smaller group tonight, but 
feisty, I'm sure. I'm sure we'll get into some good discussion here in a bit about these two TIP items today. Um, I would like to recognize the, uh, the TIP policy work group members that are, in, that are here tonight. They're in the back of the room. Please raise your hand and be recognized. Um, and I suggest that because we've had, we've been meeting quite a bit lately. They're family. Um, it's, been, it's been so much. You know, we've, we've, we've had our fights and everything, but we're, we're keeping going. And uh, I think, you know, we're, we're arriving at some, some pretty good recommendations for you all ultimately. Um, and we are meeting, you know, we, we were meeting once a month. We are now meeting once every two weeks. Um, because we just, uh, the, agenda, I, the, the agendas we had were just, quite frankly, too lengthy. We couldn't have a thoughtful conversation on the items that were on there, so we're limiting that to no more than two at an agenda now, and uh, that seems to be working quite well. So the first item for, you, for your discussion this evening is um, the uh, TIP set-asides for, for the 2020 to 2023 TIP. Uh, I will say that the TIP Policy Work Group has met Oh boy, I don't know how many times we've met to talk about this. At least three times, probably four, ultimately before we arrived at a at a, um, at a proposal for you all to uh, for for your discussion this evening. Um, and a couple things I will point out with regards to this recommendation. Um, and oh, let me do this real quick. Let me just grab. The, just so everybody understands the, um, what, what this set aside, what the set asides are, we, uh, in, in the past, two tips ago, we referred to them as pools. Um, but they're traditionally, these are, uh, these are uh, uh, project categories or, or programs that the, uh, the board has um, decided to set aside for because of, of, the, of their very nature, right? The, the importance of these, these set asides to to um, you know the regional program here at Dr. Cog, um, these are the set asides that were in the the the, the current transportation improvement program. Um, we got station area master plan, urban urban center planning studies, um, the regional transportation demand management. I, I hope everybody understands what that is. Is basically it's uh, it's part of uh, there's infrastructure as well as marketing projects to encourage those to get out of their SU SOVs and try alternate modes of transportation. Our regional tra transportation operations program is uh, something that the board voted on, uh, let me see, at the last board meeting related to our work program for that and the selection of projects associated with this regional transportation operations program. Um, from the staff, from Dr. Cog's staff perspective, we help and work with your staff within your communities to uh, coordinate the, uh, um, you know, the more, more the regional corridors in our region. We coordinate the traffic signals so that, um, um, so that you know you can get from point A to point B as quickly as possible on those corridors. And it's been a very successful program. We're very proud of it here in the region. And the air quality improvements pro, uh, uh, set aside. Um, is really monies that we provide the RAC for their, for their um, air quality planning uh, work as well as uh, other initiatives. Most notably, the, we, there's a, a significant amount of money in that set aside that goes to uh, um, vehicle fleet technology and retrofits. Uh, that's obviously very important to this region and uh, they have a very, very successful program in doing so. So those are the, the, f the five set asides that we currently have. I think it's worth noting that most of the money that's included within these set asides uh, in turn gets sent back out to you all in calls for projects and the like. Um, the, the, the biggest exceptions to that are you know, about a third of the money we use for um, uh, in the regional transportation operations set aside for, for staffing that, that program and providing that engineering expertise to you all. Um, and the way to go program is the other one that we, you know, that is kind of the umbrella uh, program, um, uh, TDM program within this region. It, it, uh, we house, um, amongst other things, you know, the school pool program, our carpool program, van pool uh, administration is done under that umbrella, and, you know, community and business outreach and all that kind of good stuff. And part of that way to go, uh, or, or, or at least our, I, I should mention, like, the, on the TDM pool itself, um, you know, we also have this partnership agreement with the seven TMAs or TMOs, transportation management organizations or agencies throughout the region. And Steve uh, Erickson has done presentations on that before. Just to, and we have a tremendous, and it's it's a model for for how other regions around the country um, 
are, are working with their TDM partners. We get calls all the time about sharing our MOU process and the like with re regards to that, to that partnership. So with all that said, um, so what the work group has talked, discussed over the last three or four meetings is, first of all, in, in the white papers that we provided to you all about the, about the TIP, we, one of the things we suggested that was necessary, that we reevaluate the, the, uh, the, the set-asides that we currently have in the TIP. And uh, again, over the last four meetings or so, we've done that. We've invited the um, uh, you know, sponsors or, or spokespeople for each of these um, set-asides to come into the, to our technical work group, our policy work group, and, um, and give a presentation, explain what the program is, what it is not, um, the benefits of that program to the region from, um, in most cases, from an, you know, an air quality perspective, and, um, and you know, some of the results that they can quantify. And I think that was well received by, by the TIP Policy Work Group. And uh, we, we use that to provide you with, uh, with a recommendation on the, on the set aside that should be used for the next TIP. So um, let me just point this out. I know, golly, this is not real easy to see. At least that one screen is not. Um, we kind of we changed some of the categories a little bit to make them look, you know, because they just made a little bit more sense to us. So, but I, I wanted, wanted to make sure that you guys understood that all the programs that were in, are included within the current set-asides are still in the, exist, in the future set-asides, at least as proposed. It's just they, they might be, you know, named the category, the umbrella that they fall under are a little different. Um, so, for example, let me just uh, scroll through this. So the station area master plans, urban center planning studies, um, that was a separate set aside in the, um, in, in the current TIP, is now being combined with, um, with small infrastructure projects in the regional TDM pool to form what we're now calling community mobility planning and implementation. So, so a portion of the TDM pool and all of the stamp pool are now being called community mobility planning and implementation. That's this one here on the, on the, on the top, top line. And then, um, you know, in, in the old, uh, in, in the current that we have, we had a separate pool for TDM and a separate pool for way to go. So what we did, we combined those under a, a category called TDM services. So the traditional T TMA partnerships and the TDM marketing projects, those now are part of that TDM service, as is the Way to Go program. It just made more sense. It didn't make sense to have a separate set aside or you know, category structure that had Way to Go as its own separate one. It's, it's primarily related to TDM, so it just made sense. Um, and then the, the other two that are listed here, the regional tra transportation op operations and the air quality improvements are exactly like um, in, in the new proposal in that uh, um, the only change is that we've actually, we've added a word in the regional transportation operations, we, it's now regional transportation and operations and technology. And that was important to the work group because we understand the growing need for for uh, innovations in technology. This is all discussion with the mobility choice discussion that we've had around this board and we will be having more discussion about it over the next year as well as the whole smart cities initiatives and all that. So we felt it important that that terminology be included into that uh, set aside uh, category. And the air quality improvements pool is, is the same as before. Now there is one change to that, to that set aside in that um, in the current Current uh, set aside, we had a small pool for these um, uh, to allocate and administer uh, local projects. Um, during our discussions and all, in the, the debate and, and the discussion that we had, we felt that that money was probably better served if we included that portion under the TDM projects. Because what we were trying to do with that, that, that this was a new pool that we had established separate call was to find a niche between our general call for projects and TDM call and it, it, it just it, it was very difficult it you know, we had trouble finding that niche so Ken Lloyd at BRAC um, who's present today he he's the one that recommended that we move that money that was in there it was like eight hundred thousand dollars to the uh, TDM projects so and last but not least is this new pool of human services transportation um, 
And what basically that, that is, is, is monies that would be used to complement the, um, the, the monies that we currently have in our, in our area agency on aging. We would u use our, like the Older Americans Act and the like to, um, to complement that money to fund more transportation trips, really. I mean, that's really what it came down to. I believe, I think I speak for the work, uh, for the TIP Policy Work Group when I say that they all felt that that was a very important endeavor. We all know that transportation is a uh, ongoing need for seniors. It is always listed in the top two or three things that when we do surveys and the like. So uh, the board felt very strongly that we should create the board, sorry. The Policy Work Group felt strongly that we should include a new, uh, new category called uh, Human Service Transportation. So um, the reason I did that is just to show you that, you know, while the categories have changed, the major components of each are there. They, they, the, the, the most, I'm just going to go through the most notable changes between now and the future, as proposed by the, by the Policy Committee. The current set-aside pool in aggregate is $40 million. That's what it currently is. What is being proposed as part of this and is included in your packet um, is uh, $49.4 million. And the major changes, the most notable changes to that are really, there's three. There's, um, we've, um, and I, I talked about this in this Regional Transportation Operations Technology Pool. It's current, in the current TIP, it's $16.8 million. The board felt because of the, you know, just this whole technology boom that we're talking about that I just did, described, that it, they felt necessary to include approximately, well, it's not quite $4 million, just $3.2 million additional in that pool. And um, so that, that eats up, you know, $3.2 million of that increase. The other is um, on the uh, human services transportation, that is a new pool, and it is suggested that that would be funded at $4 million over the life of the TIP, so it would be a $1 million annually. And last but not least, in the um, uh, let me see, in the TDM services pool, the Way to Go program was in the current tip is 7.2 million. It was um, there was a lot of discussion about this, and I there was not it, it was not unanimous in how to handle this, um, but it, we ultimately it was agreed to um, to increase that from 7.2 to 8.8, .8, and I would like to explain the reason why for that. So it's basically it's 400 million, sorry, it's 400 thousand dollars annually that would be increased to that to that program, and primarily, you know, there's some administrative costs, you know, inflation type stuff, cost of living stuff that we included in there, um, but primarily it has to do right now. It basically would keep the program whole. There's a pot of money that, we, that they are currently uh, hitting right now at Dr. Cog um, that, is, that is basically is going away. And, um, but, and it'll, be, it'll be basically, it'll be, it'll be gone by the time the new tip rolls around. I'm looking at Steve Erickson. So this $400,000, for the most part, will allow that program just to remain whole on, um, and offset that money. So it, it was really, just in case you're interested, we used to actually own the vans in our van pool program. Uh, we since we contract that service out now, but uh, we had some proceeds from the sale of those those uh, vans, and we use that money to to um, you know to basically market that program as well as the other TDM stuff that we've done, and and that money's just going away. We've uh, depleted that 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 account. So those that's all really I have for you right now. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have or, or any additional information you would like for the for the committee. Uh, to provide to you all to help your decisions in, in, uh, in making, well, quite frankly, the, your decisions on uh, our set-asides going forth. Mr. Partridge. Thank you, Doug. So roughly the set-asides increased 25% for this tip cycle. So, Doug, do we know what the total amount for this whole cycle would be? because the set-asides are a portion of it. So if the set-asides are increasing 25%, do we know if the total amount's gonna increase 25%? Any idea? It's a very good question. I don't think it is, not by 25%. I, I think we had, um, I, we're using a number 280 million right now as kind of a placeholder for what we think it might be. We really don't know, and we should know by the end of the year how much that would be. 
Um, we had 274 million last time. Oh, I'm sorry, 268 is what we had um, when we did the call last time. If you want to do that quick math, Roger, I'm pretty sure it's not 25 percent, but. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so it's really only about 12 million more is what you're looking at. You said 280? Correct. So we're and it 12, could be more than that, could be less. We just don't know. 12 million more, right, and just planning purposes. And here we're looking to increase, you know, basically eat up 80% of that increase. Right, right, right. Okay. No, I mean, that's, that, that's a legitimate point. There's no doubt. I, but, again, I, I would... My only, I would only suggest that that money, if it makes you feel any better about that, that the money that, you know, really for the, the RTO program, which is the big ones, right, the, R, the big increases, RTO program and the new uh, human services one are, are monies that will go back out, to, I mean, exclusively to you guys. I mean, that money is not kept here at Dr. Cog. It's, it's through a whether a call for projects or some other mechanism that we already established will go back out to the community. So it's, I just want to make sure that that's clear. Good. Ms. Jones. Um, thanks for the explanation, Doug. And, and Roger raises a good point. We need to be mindful of the money. I would say that um, I, I think it makes sense, and thanks to the the TIP working group for spending so much time on this. The two areas where there are made significant increases, I think, are two areas that we've identified are um, focal points going forward. One is we we've recognized that we're gonna we're going through a revolution in transportation technology, uh, and we need to be um, watching that. That's why we're investing in mobility choice blueprint, and that's one of my questions will be coming up: is how does this interact with that? But certainly setting aside some funds for um, innovative technology projects in recognition that we are undergoing this transformation in the next handful of years makes a lot of sense. And then the other big increases for um, the human service transportation needs that we are going to really need to be investing more resources in because of the silver tsunami that we know our region is experiencing. We've heard from JLA multiple times. The cost effective and quality of life way to help seniors is to enable them to stay in their homes as long as they can and as long as they want. And a key piece of that is making sure that they have transportation to meet those basic needs and we know that's underfunded now. It makes sense to be recognizing this growing demand and, and investing more resources in that. Any other comments or questions? Ms. Shaw. Thank you. Um, I, I know the question or the comment has been made before that it would be helpful for us to know more about uh, the successes that many of these programs have brought about so that we know the effectiveness and it looks like you're prepared. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I wish I was prepared. No, I actually had a conversation right before the meeting actually with Director Dyack about this okay. specifically. And I think that's a great idea. Um, what we can do is kind of provide you a summary of those presentations that we had at the TIP Policy Work Group and highlight some of the, you know, like you say, some of the some of the benefits of the program, some of the accomplishments, those types of things, if you feel that that's something will be useful to you all, yeah, we'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Other comments or questions? Um, this is Director Peck. I have a question. Go ahead, please. Okay, it's under the definition of regional projects. Um, can you define what a regional project is? Is it uh, more than just the freeways being eligible? Uh, Director or, Peck, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're you're probably referring to the next agenda item. Oh, okay. Is that in the regional definition you're referring to? I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We'll 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 get there real quick. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Dostman. Thank you. I think it would be helpful on the same lines of, of what Director Shaw was talking about to understand um, the successes and how you can relate, like the TMAs versus the way to go. Just, um, just understanding that split and um, how effective the dollars between those two splits are. 
definitely. You know, we can we can do that. Yep, Steve Steve Erickson is nodding. Anyone else on the phone have any comments or questions? Last call here in the room. If I, 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 I just seek a little bit of direction on this and how you would like us to proceed. I, I understand we can, get, we can get some additional information for you all about your comfort level in um, you know bringing this forth to the board with that additional information, or would you rather have another work session to discuss this? It makes no difference to me personally. I just like to know the direction. Mr. Brockett. Well, I'll say for me personally, I think you're on the right track. I think to uh, Director Jones's points, I think the areas where you're identifying a need for new funding are appropriate ones. So I'm comfortable moving forward. Okay. Mr. Rakowski. I would recommend you take it to the board with the additional information requested by directors. Thank okay. you. Mr. Partridge. You know, I certainly like the general direction. I think being able to se uh, separate the, this from the next uh, agenda item is, is difficult, but I generally support it, but I think we still have to be cautious looking at the amounts overall. But I you know, generally support it, think you're going the right direction, but I, again, I think it's, a, it's going to be weighed over the, looking at everything. Well, um, Mr. Chairman, if I may, uh, just to address that comment, what if you know, we were to take it to our to the board next meeting with a more robust presentation on you know some of the, the advantages and all that kind of stuff to these programs and um, you know we can always revisit this right if we get further down the road when we're talking about you know the whole tip policy and we want to make changes we can always do that but I think it just provides us a little bit of direction that if we can if we can because we, we really need to come up with a number for the set aside before we can do the other stuff um, but it can also always be tweaked right so I so if that's, if that's okay with you, I think that's, I mean, I think staff would be amenable to that approach. Watching the motion of the heads, I'm, I'm seeing what looks like a fairly good consensus of this is ready to go to the board with the additional information, understanding that the final numbers, as Doug indicated, are not in. So those final numbers could affect us, and that will be determined probably sometime around the end of the year. With that, all those in favor of moving it to the board? Yes. Uh, just show me a saw hands. I'll make sure I'm not <laughs> catching anybody. Okay. Looks like we have a majority. Let's go ahead and move it to the board for the, uh, their consideration. Great. Thank Go you all very one. much. Yes, next item. We also had quite a bit of discussion on this one, too. Um, so this, oh, let me see. Let me get to it. So this, this is attachment C in your packet, item number six. Um, it's a discussion about the, uh, the TIP regional share. Um, about the TIP regional share and you know we had a conversation about this I believe two meetings ago um, where we talked about this and you know I think there was there's a lot of it's very difficult because it's kind of difficult to define what a transformational project is right it's one of those we always say well you'll you know it when you see it well I, I don't think that went over real well with you all and uh, we fully understood that. And so we, what we tried to do, and we've met, oh my Lord, I don't know, probably three meetings on this as well. I'm looking at Gene and them in the back. And um, I think what we've come up with now is at least more con concrete, right? It's more black and white. And we can have a discussion about, you know, additions or, or deletions of this list. But I really would like to um, just kind of scroll down through the attachment that we provided to you all. I won't, not the dual model, you guys have seen that all, but detachment two. So it really sets up that we really, first and foremost, we kind of describe what the purpose and the general rules are, right? And I, um, I think it, I think it's pretty poetic. <laughs> I think we did a pretty darn good job with it. Um, but I, there's a couple things that I would like to point out in here that I think are worth pointing out. That um, that the regional projects and programs, um, they have to address several things. They have to address the established TIF focus areas, and we'll get to that at a future meeting, and I know we're definitely going to talk about it at the, the, our board workshop later on this month. So it has to, to address the TIF focus areas. It also has to be um, um, 
Well, I'll just read this sentence because I think it's very important. Regional programs or projects should connect communities, greatly improve mobility and access, and provide a high return on investment to the region consistent with Dr. Cog MetroVision plan and the 2040 MetroVision Regional Transportation Plan. And that's consistent with, with what we've talked about in the past. Um, and this last sentence that's included I think is important. That was an that was, uh, added addition uh, based on our, our conversations with the, the TIP Policy Work Group is that um, so you have to remember that we're planning on doing the, uh, the call for projects for, for regional projects first. And then once that's done, then the sub-regional calls will occur. So, uh, so what this basically sa states is that if there are funds left over in the regional pot, once you guys select projects in that pot, then that money would be proportionally allocated to the sub-regional to, to the, to the sub forums. Um, we just wanted to make sure that that was included in there so, you know, we wouldn't just be holding it in some, some other pot. So, um, so we thought that was important. Um, so, so getting into the, the, the nuts and bolts of this now, the really, the regional share and again, we're only talking about eligibility here now, right? It's nothing to do with criteria and how projects will be selected. It's just ultimately what is a regional project and what are the eligibility requirements. So there's really two elements to the regional share. There are programs and there are projects. The regional programs um, are uh, the, you know, I mean, you see, see the definition of what we provided here, and I'm, um, I, won't, I won't read it to you. But I think that what we tried to do in here is provide some flexibility, because while the projects was very easy to, um, you know, to really define, um, and, I, and you'll see that here in a minute, the programs were less. And it was intentionally left a little flexible in that, because although I think I know everything, and I know what a regional innovative project might be, I might not. And there could be others within your communities or those that are eligible to receive federal monies that we might get applications to, that they might have this great idea for a program at the regional level, right? So it might be innovative, whatever it is. And that, that project should be heard by, by the board. Um, the, um, um, the, the thing I would like to point out, though, with the re re regional share program is that under the proposal, Participation within the proposed program, along with the anticipated services and benefits, must be available within the entire Dr. Cog TIP planning area. Does everybody understand what that means? So it's not, so we, if we get a project from X county and is a, is a project that is very specific to that county, that, based on this definition, would not be eligible for the regional pot. It would be one in which it was, it's, it's a more universal concept of a project that it would be, you, there would be, um, the services would be available to anybody within the region. I'll, I'll just throw one out there um, because I've talked about this before. So say a, a RTD pass subsidy for, for uh, lower income households. That is one because we all have lower income households within the entire region. That was one that would be eligible based on this definition because it, it, every community within this region could, could have access to that, to that uh, program. Everybody understand? Make yourself clear on that? Okay, good. Uh, I, I, think, I think that was a very good addition to our discussion on that. It made a lot of sense. It, it, it allowed us to coalesce around the pro uh, definition for programs, which was very difficult for us to really determine. Um, so, so that, that, that's really, that's all I really wanted to hit on programs. I'd be happy to, I'd be actually interested in your, um, in your thoughts on, on that definition. Um, and then we get to the projects. And uh, we had quite a bit of discussion about this. And what we decided to do is really tie this back to the implementation of our fiscally constrained long range transportation plan. And that fiscally constrained plan is a federally, requ federally required document that, um, that every four years we're required to do. And those, those that were here for the last call, or last time, you'll remember that, you know, we have, part of this, part of this whole con process is we identify the amount of revenue we'll have, we'll have over the next 25 years, what is, what, you know, based on historical trends and the amount of federal funding we've gotten in the past and all that kind of good stuff. And then we've 
indicate how many, you know, we, then we try to match the projects or our needs against that, the, that dollar value. Um, and we have to be able to fiscally constrain it. We can't have just a wish list of projects that has to be reasonable expectation that we can afford to pay for those projects. So the, the work group felt that that was a great, great idea to use our plan. And um, it basically, what it does, it basically, it just, it tears, uh, not, it doesn't tear the system, but it basically provides you with a visual of the type, of the projects that are eligible. So we'll go through this one by one. Um, so first of all, so as far as eligible, eligible projects, right? So regional, B, right, uh, regional rapid transit projects. And this is a map that is in our plan and is fis in our fiscally constrained plan. Um, and I'll go to these maps. You can read off, off your own sheet here. But the fiscal constrained plan. So in the regional pot, the projects that are included on this, on this map would be eligible. Right, so some of these, quite frankly, some of these are already complete, um, such as US, US 36. But like uh, State Highway 19, for example, would be eligible. Uh, Colfax would be eligible. Um, so I think you're getting the idea here. It's basically, um, it's, it's, you know, it's, our, it's our rapid transit system we have in our plan that, um, that we believe, and we're, yeah, you'll, you'll notice that we're hitting the high level facilities within our region, those what we deem to be regionally significant projects. So that is, um, that's rapid transit. Bicycle corridors, eligible bicycle corridors. This is a map um, that we've, we've had, quite frankly, in our 2035 and our 2040. The 2040, there's a few tweaks to it. Um, but this map is kind of a placeholder right now for us, just to illustrate the types of projects that would be eligible. We're in the process of, 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 of initiating an active transportation plan, a regional active transportation, transportation plan, which part of that we hope to, um, um, well, we will have a new map associated with this that will illustrate kind of a tearing of bicycle network, uh, bicycle infrastructure in our community. So you have, you know, it's kind of like, our, um, our highway network, you know, you have your interstates and freeways, expressways, principal arterials and the like. We'll do something similar to that in our, in our AT plan. And uh, so this is kind of a placeholder right now for that discussion. In the absence, and if we don't get that map produced, um, this, we will probably use this map. Yeah. And um, yes? Let me catch a question. Ms. Sable. Yes. So sorry, Mr. Rex. No, you're good. Um, I'm going to go back to the um, eligible projects yeah. and um, I was asked by one of my commissioners um, on the freeways mm -hmm. um, why um, tollways would not be included and I couldn't give him an answer so I'm gonna look to you for an answer. <laughs> All righty. Um, here's a, oh my word that map is terrible but uh, it's better on that screen than probably that one. Um, the, the long-range transportation plan, I, you know, I mentioned this whole fiscal constraint portion, uh, yeah. Director Zabo. The, um, we have two kind of categories of projects in there. We have projects that are deemed to be eligible for, for um, federal and state monies. Mm -hmm. And that is the money that we, we use to constrain our plan. Mm -hmm. And those are the projects you see up here in red. See up here in red right now. So they actually submit projects during our call for projects, and they're scored. And those ultimately are selected by the board to receive either our money or state money. Okay. Okay. The blue that you see in here, um, these are projects that are locally funded. Uh, are, um, they, these may be projects that were submitted as part of our call for a long-range plan that just did not make you know the cut ultimately, or projects that were. Um, are, um, have always been historically deemed to be locally funded, and those have been tollways. Um, those have always been seen as locally funded because they don't traditionally, like, like 100% toll facilities. They um, uh, we just haven't funded. They you know they they generate their own revenue. Those types of things. Now that doesn't mean that a that a toll facility could not submit for a call for project as part of our plan. Sure. And we've had circumstances like that before. I think one in particular, Steve, found that that happened 12 years ago. But um, Well, then it's time again. 
<laughs> right? But but that's but that's in a nutshell what it is. It's it's okay. definitely it's been seen at, by us all toll facilities as as locally funded. And you see like you know E E470 yeah, for yeah. example. And I think some of the time why jurisdictions tend to go to toll funded is because it's almost impossible to get federal funds and even more impossible to get state funds because there are none. <laughs> Um, you know what I mean? So it's, it's kind of like you're stuck between a rock and a hard place. And if, if so let's say a, a piece of one of those projects was told, but a piece was public, mm -hmm. would that piece be eligible? Only if it were part of our fiscally constrained plan. Of course. Yes. But I mean eligible to submit or whatever. Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. If it was ultimately determined that, you know, it scored high enough on our call for projects okay. and, you know, the board ultimately approved of course. it, I know. then it would be eligible, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's the issue right now. And I think this is probably a good opportunity to talk about that with regards to, uh, well, railway projects or any of these projects that for, you know, capacity improvements and those types of things, those projects have to be on our long-range plan for to be eligible for federal money. So if it's not in our plan, it would not even be eligible. So if you have a project, a highway capacity project, that you think you know, you'd like to do an application for, and if it's not on our plan, it's not eligible. Ms. Jones? I just wanted to clarify that um, projects that are in the fiscally constrained RTP as purely locally funded like a toll road would have to seek an amendment to the RTP in order to seek funding under the TIP. Most definitely. If it's, if it's not currently in there uh, for this TIP call, yes, it would have to be amended into the plan. Other questions at this point? Ms. Jones, go ahead. Actually, sorry. Um, when is the next update to the RTP? Uh, twin, so the next call for projects would probably occur probably a year and a half from now. I'm looking at Steve for this because um, we are required to adopt the next plan mm -hmm. by End of early yeah, it's early. It's like first quarter of 20. I Oh yeah, I'll will send it to you. Yeah. Just just in line with that, and if there was to be a request to amend the R RTC, when would that next be eligible? Um, well, we we do RTP, I'm sorry. we do a, we do a call for amendments every year. Okay. Um, so we're in the process right now. Of I, it's probably going to be <phone rings> September, late September, that we'll 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 initiate that call, um, and you all will get notification of that don't worry okay. other comments or questions again anybody on the phone yeah, get it. okay Doug, go ahead. I'm sorry Mr. Yeah. Dyack. Uh, thank you chair um, you know for me I just want some clarification I had a side conversation with Steve on on the um, on the maps uh, he was explaining to me that some of these uh, some of these corridors or uh, routes uh, that are on there may not be part of uh, eligible corridors or routes. If it's done, it's done, and we should get it off. So, I mean, to me, I guess I'm looking for some explanation to Matt. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, okay. I think the next one is managed. Oh, no. We're managed, in the other. Where's managed line? Um, yeah, if they're complete, remove them off. Yeah, no, I agree with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm to me, I just want more of a... a a cleaner copy of what what is um, what what you're trying to communicate here because if some things are on here that shouldn't be on definitely we should take them off because it, it kind of confuses the issue no I, I agree 100 percent yeah so we'll um, no I agree with that and we will yeah we'll, we'll, we'll there's some additional cleanup that needs to happen on these maps and and we acknowledge that um, quite frankly to be honest with you we had our tip policy work group Monday night last week ran into probably six o'clock. We only had a day to get this out the door. So there's there's still some work that needs to be done on the maps to get rid of like projects that are already fully funded or under construction or complete, quite frankly. Um, but this is more of just illustrative purposes for you all. So, um, Mr. Brockett, go ahead. 
I had a question back on the transit map, if you don't yes. mind going back to that. I was curious about the history. Um, you know, there was, the, of course, the uh, Northwest Area Mobility Study that was conducted a few years ago, and it identified a few top priority corridors for bus rapid transit. And one of them was 119, which is on this, right. this map, but there were some others. 287, I think, was the next highest priority, as, as well as State Highway 7 and a couple others. Did any of those apply to be on this fiscally constrained plan? What, what, what's the reason that none of those other ones are on this map? I might, I might, I know Steve's contemplating there. I might, I might turn to Steve on this, but we do. I mean, we lean on RTD pretty hard on that, on the, on the transit side, as you can imagine, because you know the revenue money is generated from the RTD side, so we match with the projects that they recommend on the other side. So they don't, they typically they don't submit projects as part of our call, right, Steve? Well, they, they could, or it could, could be jointly, the Steve Cook with the uh, transportation staff. Um, it could be jointly with a community, you know, with a city or a county. Um, obviously, they submitted fast tracks right. 15 years ago or 12, 12 years ago. Um, I don't recall if any were actually submitted last time from after the NAMS, uh, uh, after the NAMS study. I don't believe so. Um, if it had been, and potentially if it didn't score enough, it might not have made it onto here, you know, because we had to prior we had to cap everything. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it, I didn't see. A I'm, pr I'm pretty sure it was, and oh, I think the only one Deborah. was State Highway 19 that was submitted. Right, and then yeah, Deborah's nodding yes. Right. Okay, so it, and I guess that something could potentially be reconsidered at the next call for projects. Oh, definitely, or yes. Then. Okay, <laughs> maybe that's something. Maybe in partnership with the local community. Sounds like there you go. All right, <laughs> thank you. Yep. Alrighty, so that's bus rapid transit and our um, uh, multi-use trails maps. We also have our Hold freeway. Yes. Please. I apologize, but since you were at the BRT map, just going back, um, I was curious, and I think I mentioned this to you yesterday. Um, One nineteen, the the um, line is drawn without including either ends of the BRT anticipated service, right? Um, which is illogical at best. Why, isn't, why doesn't the line cover the entire route and what would it take for that map to be more accurate? Well, um, that would, re well, l let me just state it this way. The, the, the line that you see, we're talking about State Highway 19 right here, the BRT route. The line that you see right here is the definition of the capacity improvement, the transit capacity improvement, um, the, yeah, the, the, the fixed guideway that was included in, in, in the plan, plan proposal. Um, it does not suggest that any operational improvements that occur you know, on either end would not be eligible, because that would help in, in uh, you know, fulfilling, it would help in implementing the, the plan, right? Um, but as far as, you know, this is what is currently in, so the only capacity improvement can occur, only occur on this section. If so, if when, you know, if there's NEPA documentation that suggests something otherwise, that would have to be amended into our plan. But any operational improvements you would do, separate from like taking a lane for BRT or in adding a lane for BRT, um, that would require a plan amendment, but anything outside of that is fine. So if you do signal coordination or something like that, queue jump lanes, those types of things, those would all be eligible. Okay, let's go. Okay, so we talked the uh, multi-use trails. So on the highway side, and this, this uh, gets into discussion that Director Zabo was mentioning. So what we are proposing in our in our um, uh, recommendation is that for the regional pot we should concentrate on the freeway freeway um, sections of our of our region so that would uh, it involves interstate facilities and other limited access facilities and those are all shown in red on on the map now with that said on the freeway system in the in the current fiscally constrained plan the only the only segments that are eligible for projects are those that are highlighted in blue. The only capacity projects that are uh, eligible are those that are listed in blue. So you got a, a section of I-25 North um, 
right here. You got uh, 270. Um, you got Pena, a section of I-25 in kind of midtown area, and a little section of 225. The other stuff, the, you see the hatch line right here on uh, Central 70. That one is fully funded, and that will one that would be removed, and potentially the uh, C-470 project too, because that has a funding package. So uh, I just want to be sure to point that out that you know it's really not a lot of projects, right? But it is, you know, from a regional high-level high-level um, um, concept, you know, these are probably these are the projects that would move the most traffic, right? From a from a roadway perspective. Any questions or comments on that one? Ms. Jones, go ahead. Okay. okay. Well. It, not that those aren't important, but that's a pretty limited supply of potential projects for regional. And I guess I'm wondering, given that a lot of our traffic challenges, our mobility challenges are on smaller roadways like arterials, why wouldn't we then want to expand the definition of regional to allow a potentially larger pool of projects? I'm thinking major regional arterials uh, that cross jurisdictional boundaries or something like that. It would be great to see w if we expanded the definition to include a slightly larger set of roadways, what that might look like, because I imagine that would involve a greater number of communities and quite a number of our transportation challenges. Mr. Dyer. Um, thanks. Uh, this is just a question uh, Pena um, I, I guess my question is why is it why is it on there um, I, I mean I thought it was an FAA I mean it, again I it, I'm just looking at the freeway definition uh, Pena is not a definition or a, a, a freeway and I thought it was it was uh, kind of owned or by the FAA so I'm, I'm unclear could you educate me yeah well Pena is a freeway I mean it's a limited access facility meaning that you know it doesn't have accurate intersections right mm -hmm. um, it's not on the interstate system if that's yeah. that's yeah. what you meant yes. yeah um, so you know under our definition okay. that you know it would be eligible uh, you know project but I mean who who actually owns that quite honestly I'm I'm very ignorant at this point in time and I, don't I think know I've asked it a couple Graves times want to, want to yeah that. I mean does does Mr. Denver Graves, would you like to okay. take on the responsibility for the answer to that no, I'm just curious thank you mr. chairman <laughs> <laughs> we'll dump it right in your lap so just quickly I don't I don't really have anything more to add but we certainly have uh, responsibility as a jurisdiction that it fits the list technical difficulties over here but we're, we're watching closely because we clearly have a still a great deal of need there Ms. Abel thank you um, and I, I agree with um, director Jones about uh, opening up a little bit because anyway and maybe this is my ignorance when I get on Pena Boulevard I'm going to one place and most of the people that are on there with me are going to one place it doesn't cross jurisdictions where other places would, and so it's very nice. I love it, Anthony, um, to, to get out there quickly to the airport, but it doesn't cross other jurisdictions, and it's kind of a, a, a one-stop place, right? Everybody's heading to the airport. You can get off at other places and get a <laughs> rental car, I guess, or something else, but for the most part. Mr. So. Teeter, please. Yes, if I may, um, we are in, in the process right now of uh, turning Tower Road into a four-lane highway, which will intersect Pena Boulevard, and we also have included bike paths up to that point. Mr. Roth? I presume the one place you're referring to is the Gaylord Convention and <laughs> Hotel. <laughs> Mr. Graves, did you have another follow-up? Yes, just just quickly, I, and uh, let me back up here. So I I recognize that it goes through one jurisdiction, but I I think that the obvious issue, at least from our perspective, is that it has true regional import, right? That we're getting traffic from all over the metro area, and collectively, the city and county of Denver, uh, Aurora, Commerce City, Adams County, we've been working very closely together 
regarding Eritropolis and that vision. And so there's there's a lot of uh, there are a lot of implications that are connected to other issues out there that impact multiple jurisdictions. Ms. Dolson. Thank you, Chair. So I, I really appreciate the regional significance of the airport. Certainly people from our, my community and other communities um, use it. And I'm interested in the idea of opening up the definition so more projects can be considered also. But I, you know, I'd sort of like to move us to the unavoidable topic of funding because I, it's undeniable that just the projects listed here could exhaust our entire funding source if we wanted to. So I think it's important to talk about the other regionally significant projects that I do think are important to add, but also that we have to have enough funding to be able to make significant progress on these regionally significant projects. Ms. Abel. And I'm not saying, Anthony, that it isn't and it's not regional, but like um, Director Jones said, there are other places that we could open it up to that regionally a lot of people go to that open up a, a, a lot more for um, small, smaller arterials that are pretty much just hor in horrible shape. Well, if we wanted to look for one example uh, that crosses multiple jurisdictions, look at Santa Fe or 25, uh, which is important to Jefferson, Douglas, Arapaho County, and multiple cities. Yes. Yes, and that's how, uh, please note, that's how Ashley gets to the mini dealership. <laughs> off of county line. <laughs> Any other comments at this point? Ms. Shakti? Um, I don't, I guess I would just add that the places, so the places I get stuck in traffic aren't up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and you gotta I, get off those two lane roads, Shakti. <laughs> um, so I think it raises, I don't know how much of, the first, the first question is, are these the places that would impact the most people if we, um, um, like for example, I think about where six stops being, a, when I'm coming to Dr. Cog, I get off six, I get stuck in traffic there. Yeah. Um, so are there places on smaller roads where in fact we're funneling a lot of people through and those might be places um, because in looking at the, um, we only have a certain amount of money that's going to be used at this, we want to make sure that it's spent where it's going to impact the most people, and um, it, is, this, is this it? All good questions. And let me, because you used a specific example there on, on 6th Street, right? Let's talk about that one. And you're right, because I've been stuck in that traffic too. Um, the problem is, that project is not identified in our long-range transportation plan as a capacity project. So we couldn't do, I mean, we couldn't, it's, as a result, it is not eligible anyway, right? I mean, and now we can do some operational improvements on, on that, but, um, you know, so the question is, and really, I mean, it's a philosophical thing with regards to the pots, right? How much money do you put in that pot? And we'll have that discussion today or another time, I'm sure. Um, but it's, you know, if you look, and I won't belabor this, but, you know, if you look at the, the projects that are l indicated on this freeway system as in need and, and identified in a long-range transportation plan, if you look at the regional system, the high-level regional system, these improvements, I would, I would suggest, would have a tremendous impact on the rest of the system, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's... That's kind of what we discussed in our in our in our work group. It's like you know, it has there's regional importance to these to these projects because for the most part, there are, there are projects where you know there's slowdowns on. We all know them, right? I mean, 225, everybody knows it. There's there's backup, you know, coming north in, on I-25 in the morning because of 225, and and um, you know, so what it has it has dramatic impacts to other facilities on the freeway system. Um, I think that's the way we kind of looked at it. Now, those projects such as you're suggesting, if it were included in the long-range plan, um, potentially could be funded with the sub-regional share uh, if it was important enough to that sub-region. Just throwing it out there. And that's kind of the concept, right, we were working on. So if, if there are smaller roads that have a regional significance that really lots of people are driving on and they're not in the plan as 
ha as being able to increase capacity, um, why would that generally be? Because th they're not situated so they can increase capacity, or is there some other reason they wouldn't have gotten into the plan? Well, I mean, it really all relates back to, you know, air quality conformity and the like. So we're required that, um, you know, we have this definition of regionally significant projects. And those projects, they have to be in our plan for modeling purposes for air quality, but they also have to be in our plan so that we show we have a fiscally constrained plan. So you just can't, you know, in order to get a new project in the plan, you would have to amend it, amend a plan, or take something out or something, right? It has to be some change in order to bring a project in. But that's just aerobic capacity, right? So isn't, isn't there something about expanding Wadsworth on roadway capacity? Yeah. Yep, that's in the plan. So why and, isn't it up there? Well, because it's, it's not a freeway freeway thing. Here's, yeah. See, here, right here, you'll see there's, there's your project on Wads. That's, this is okay. all the projects that are regionally funded are, are indicated in red. The projects that I'm showing you here are just projects on the freeway system, not the arterial system. So, and you're saying that both the arterial and the freeway system would be included for regional or just the freeway just system? Just the freeway system. Because they impact more people, or why? I would say yes. Well, it, and, and Steve just pointed out, I, I, I think this is important to note, and we, we, we indicate this in the table, that what I'm, this, what I'm referring to here, this is just for capacity improvements. Now, we will entertain, we, you all will entertain pro operational projects on anywhere on the freeway network. So if there's an operational improvement that can solve some queuing, you know, then that would be highly, I'm sure it would be well received by the board. Right, and that could be anywhere on these red lines. And that could be regional. And that, yes, yeah. As long as, it, as long as there's a benefit to the the freeway system, or this, down, this trunk line. I'm sorry. Sorry, right, let me go down to Sheriff Graves. Thank you. Um, given the questions that are are being floated and some of your responses, it occurs to me that some kind of key or paragraph or something that summarizes exactly this conversation, the questions and the responses, sure, yeah. would be extremely useful. We can definitely do that. Okay. Especially since you're all recorded. <laughs> yeah, it makes it easier for us. <laughs> okay. Other comments at this point, or can we move on for a moment? Can Mr. Brockett. Can I'll I just ask, Doug, the, the other image that you were showing about which projects are on uh, are eligible? Yes. Where, where is that from? Is that's, that in the RTP? That, that is from our RTP. Okay, so we if we download that whole yep. document, we can go find mm -hmm. that. Thanks. Okay, Mr. Parcher. So, Doug, can you help me with this? Is, so is this uh, the freeways we're looking at now? Are these in the past, or is this for the future? This is in the future. These are future. It, it, is that what you mean? I mean, yeah. th these are these are improvements that are in our plan that we hope to construct over the next twenty years. So I'll see. My interest is looking at C four seventy. Right. But I'm not aware of any plan to expand C four seventy. What it is? No. Other now. other than that, see that this is a map from our long range plan that was adopted in 2015. So C four right. I mean C four seventy. That pa that project represents the one that you guys are constructing now. Right. But what I'm confused about is because there were no Dr. Cog funds that went to that. No, no. But there's there's federal money on on that project. Right. Yeah. But not through Dr. Cog. Correct. Even though Dr. Cog had to be in So I think that's what's kind of confusing it. It looks at, yeah, you know, I think that's a very important point to make out. It's not just Well. Yeah, I, mean, I think you're right. And it gets back to yeah. Director Dyack's original thing about cleaning up these maps to get rid of projects that already have a funding package right. and those types of things, which we will definitely do when we bring it back to you. Okay. Okay. Ms. Abel. Um, one other question. You had mentioned that this is like a 20-year long-range plan. Correct. Are we planning for um, when these are done in 20 years that they won't be obsolete at that point because we have so much people? Maybe that's a good idea. Yeah, it's a yes. trem tremendous idea. Yeah. Hopefully not, and that's why we're preaching. 
the use of alternate modes and diversifying our transportation portfolio a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Dyack. <laughs> no. Go ahead, John. Yeah, no, I, I was just going to respond to Director Partridge, but Executive Director uh, Rex did. I mean, to me, it's just kind of hopefully we can get, and I, I appreciate the uh, the urgency and, and the time crunch uh, staff had, but if, if we can kind of clean up the maps to kind of articulate what truly what we're trying to communicate, I think we'd have a much better conversation the next time we talk about it. Yep, definitely so. Okay, we're ready to move on. Shakti, what do you got? So, uh, in my last question, I, I, I see we talked about improvements to roads that are not on, they're on the smaller roads. Right. Um, and you said that's fine as that could happen at, in the regional process as long as they helped the freeway system. What does that mean? Well, if I said that. Well, you said something like okay. that. <laughs> let me let me say this. So. Yeah. For roadway capacity projects for the regional share, right? So only capacity improvements on those sections that are shown in blue are eligible. Then you can also have operational improvements on this, this trunk system, this red network, right? Just the red lines, the freeway network. You can do operational improvements on any of these sections. So that could include, could be anything from I don't know. I could be some ITS technology involved with that, or, or, what's that? Auxiliary. Yeah, auxiliary lane improvements, those types of things, um, that would that would help the the main line. It could involve uh, an interchange that has benefits, not only to the cross street, right, but has benefits to the freeway section. So you mean the interchange onto the freeway? Correct. Um, could for the improving mobility part we look at one tier smaller roads too? Well, I mean that's up to you all. I mean you can do whatever you whatever you want. But, um, you know that's that's a discussion that you guys can have. Um, I guess so. One question would be. How much of a can of worms is that? Is there an easy way to define what is the I mean, we're talking about the big roads that are carrying a lot of people that, um, yeah. is there a name for those? I mean, we have a regional roadway network, right? Mm -hmm. So everything you see here is basically is freeways, is interstates and freeway and, and expressways, really. Um, now the next tier would be, I guess, just principal arterials. MRE. A major. Yeah, the, the plan has three tiers, freeways slash tollways. Major regional arterials, so that's your Parker Road, Wadsworth, Santa Fe, Santa Fe, uh, Longmont Diagonal. So those are the major regional arterials, and those are identified in the plan. We can show that map next time too. Um, and then we have the principal arterials, which would be on here. So it would be Alameda, Jewel, 38th ones like that. So there is an MRA, major regional arterial system. So I guess I, um, it makes sense to me to include the major regional arterials just so that may, when you're doing the comparison, and I guess I want to know if there are drawbacks that I don't see. So when you're doing the comparison that um, you're sure that, I mean, it might be that these are the projects that make sense because this is where the most people are moving, but when you do the comparison, you have, you're have you sure that those are, in fact, the best places to be spending the money. Sure. Yeah, we, we, can, we can do that. I mean, that pretty easily. We can bring that back to you next time. Just All right, Mr. Sunanik. Yeah. I'm going to tag on to Shakti's thought, which is the with regard to the major regional arterials, but also uh, what is the capacity that's currently being carried on those? Uh, some will have more than others, and so uh, having the the data for those MRAs, um, I would say I'd be looking on a couple. One that cross multiple multiple jurisdictions. Uh, your criteria on feeding the network uh, that would be a consideration, as well as the volume pressure uh, that they're currently under. Yeah, we can do all that. Thank you, Mr. Brockett. 
Yeah, I'd like to agree with Director Shakti to at least bring that forward for our consideration, maybe at the full board, the, the inclusion of the major, major regional arterials. And just one point to make about that is that I think, well, Director Stolson's point was valid that um, the amount of money that we have wouldn't fully fund these freeway projects. At the same time, there are so few of them, it almost predetermines what projects would get funded. And I think it would make sense for there to be some board discretion to look at the the projects that would most serve the region um, in the next few years. So, Okay, let's move on. So. Uh, I think that's probably all we got. Managed lanes is kind of similar. The back to <laughs> Director Dyack's comment about cleaning it up some. So the, the, the projects that would be eligible on this, this is just a separate map we have on managed lanes, would be the ones that have kind of the, the red line through those. So you have got Colfax. Um, North I-25, State Highway 19, and uh, well, C-470 is already under construction, so just kind of FYI, I don't know if there's any comments on that. And, um, and last but not least is um, we have this other category in here with regards to the rail, the rail freight system. And um, so any new, ac or any new grade separated improvements um, would be eligible as well, and those are indicated on this map. Um, you can see there on the red line, red Dr. dots. So, so does does managed lane? It, it wouldn't always mean you're building a new lane, right? Sometimes it's, you're changing how the lanes are used. Could be. And so you could be doing that in more areas than that, right? Well, you're going to hate me, but uh, <laughs> this all gets back to air quality conformity again. That. If you were to take a lane, like say, like um, like Colfax is talking about uh, uh, something like that, that would require a plan amendment because it's a change in capacity on a regionally significant roadway, oh, longer than a mile. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, yeah, you can do it, but it, in order to get money, it would have to there would have to be a plan amendment. Okay. Well, the only other comment, I appreciate all the response, and we will provide you additional information on this, on all of this. Um, you know, it gets, because this is, you know, because this conversation and what that regional network looks like could ultimately affect your, your conversation about, you know, about uh, the funding percentages in each pot, right? So, um, so we'll be very careful and diligent and get you that information. I don't know if there's, this is a conversation you want to have right now with regards to the funding split. Um, but it's it's something that was left out there at the at the uh, last time we met, and I didn't know if you, there was any additional things you'd like to talk about with regards to that. I would like to point out one thing in your in your agenda packet on the memo that's associated with this. There there was an error in uh, in the in the f basically the first section uh, first sentence under uh, under number two. It says percentage of available funds for regional share. That first sentence. Um, it says the June board work session discussed a proposal by the TIP policy work group to designate, it should not say a minimum of 30%. It should say uh, uh, to designate 30% of available funds to regional share, and then in parentheses, parentheses it should say and minimum of 70% to the sub-regional share. So that was my mistake. I asked Todd to actually put that minimum in there, but I just put it in the wrong place. I just wanted to point that out. That's it. That, that's all I need today, Mr. Chairman, unless they wanted to have a specific conversation about this funding splits. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just to state the obvious, depending on where we land on regional, major regional arterials, we may want to increase the amount of money in the regional pot if that's, if we're increasing the number of eligible projects, just so that you actually could get to more of them, which then would require decreasing the sub-regional share. I, I, one of the priorities that, that I would have for this TIP process is to make sure that we create an incentive for jurisdictions to work together in putting together corridor projects that cross jurisdictional boundaries, in particular 
um, that cross county lines. And so I think looking at major regional arterial projects and providing some funding for those would help facilitate those conversations. And I think that's where we get the biggest bang for our buck from a transportation mobility standpoint as well. So I guess you can't really discuss the share unless you know what's going to be in the regional pot. As expected. Um, not only um, what we might include or not include as far as projects, but also what is it that we want to be accomplishing? What are the principles that we're looking for? Um, I've previously referred to them as system principles that we're, we would be uh, using in evaluation of, of projects, whether they're sub-regional or regional for consideration, uh, is going to be part of that discussion. Um, Doug, you might want to cover what your expectation is at the workshop and to remind folks that they have a limited amount of time to register for the workshop so they can get their two cents in there. <laughs> I know what Connie's going to say here. Now, with regards to the workshop, yes, please. If you haven't signed up already, please do so. I believe the, the, the conference rate for the rooms is no longer available. Um, but find out what the rack rate is and maybe we might be able to... I, <laughs> I'm looking at Connie, she's going to kill me. But, um, but yes, please do, even if you just come down on Saturday, you know, for the day. We'd love to have you if you're not already signed up. But yes, part of that, part of one of the plenary sessions, one of the three plenary sessions that we're going to have is um, we're going to talk about focus areas for, for this upcoming tip. And um, so we, what we have planned, and we're working very hard right now to put together a quick little couple question survey to you all and get that out to you, I don't know, by the end of this week, but early next week, that we can just get some general reaction to some concepts with regards to focus areas. So, it, we, so that will help us direct our conversation when we get there. We only have an hour and a half, but it's our hope that we can come out of that meeting with a recommendation for focus areas that we can share with the full board, the members that were not present. Um, and I hope that's the case because we just, we got to move beyond it, right? I mean, because this is a big trigger as, as uh, Director Savannah mentioned. I mean, we can't go too far down the road without a clear understanding of how exactly you want to spend the money or where, the priorities you might have for spending that money. So. All right, I have two more for comments. Shakti, you had one, then I have Mr. Graves. Um, so the focus areas is relevant to the evaluation process maybe for both parts? Yes. Yeah. So so that's, I think, very relevant for the, the money breakdown discussion too. Sure. Mr. Graves. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, I agree with Director Sinanik, uh your comments there. I think it makes sense would add value. And then just a, a quick framing question. Forgive me because I stepped out of the room for just a minute. Where are we currently in terms of discussion regarding this proposed allocation uh, for both regional or sub-regional. So is, is this something that would move then to the full board for consideration or are we still kind of, yes. So I, I've, raised, I've raised concerns in the, the past and wanted to revisit the discussion briefly today about the allocation. I'm concerned at the 70% allocation for the sub-regional share and the 30% for regional. I, it, it may impact, I think, perhaps continuity of decision making about the types of projects we're funding even with the, the methodology that Director Fernandic talked about and takes quite a bit of money out of this shared discussion into the sub-regional pot which which has some concern for us as a jurisdiction so I'd love to hear from some of the other jurisdictions around the table about that we started to discuss it I guess a couple months ago and I'd love to hear a little bit more from the table today thank you uh, Mr. Chairman if I may real quick um, because it's relevant to that. I, I think what, what, what Director Roth was probably nodding at was that this is something that will ultimately go to the board. Um, I don't believe we're ready, from what I've been hearing today, that we're re we'll be taking this to, we won't be taking this to our next board because you want some additional information and all that kind of good stuff. But I just wanted to clarify that. At least that was my understanding. And then based on what I've asked Connie to look at, it's just about everybody in the room, except maybe one or two, are scheduled to be at the retreat. And that'll be a good point for everyone to have that continued discussion. And if those of you who have not signed up, this is still an opportunity to sign up, but you may not get the cheap room. <laughs> okay. Anything else? And just say one last thing, and then I'm going to 
shut up and sit down, Mr. Chairman. After this, you're sitting down, so go ahead. Okay. Well, <laughs> as we as we go into the retreat, I just want to give you guys a sense of how I'm thinking about this, like intuitively, and in, in talking with our staff and kicking around with a couple of folks. I'd almost like to see the inverse of a 70-30 a regional to sub-regional share. That may be much more aggressive than other people are thinking, and, and clearly there will be an ongoing discussion for us all at the retreat. But I, I really do think that the regional share is pretty anemic, given that we're trying to push kind of shared values around our planning. Thank you. Okay. And unfortunately, the bus tour doesn't have the ability to move up very much, maybe 15 minutes. So this is a good opportunity for you to spend some quality time with your fellow directors, talk about any offline subject that you want. Any offline subject you want is open. Uh, but the bus can't leave any earlier than 6.15. So you've got some time to do some. Uh, is it here? Okay. So that gives you a little bit of time for dinner. Yeah, we, we have some box lunches for those that are planning on going on the tour. Listen, if you didn't sign up for the tour and you still would like to go, you're more than welcome. I'm just not going to feed you dinner. Yeah, no, we got, we got food for you. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we thank you for your time tonight. We are adjourned, and uh, those of you going for the tour, lunch is served down the hall. Those of you who are not, please enjoy a safe trip home.